Hello everyone, welcome to another video. This one's going to be a bit of a servicing slash cleanup video for this Dyson DC39 bagless cylinder. Now, before I show you how dirty it is, I hasten to add this isn't my vacuum cleaner. I wouldn't allow it to get into this sort of mess. But all I'm going to do basically is show you how to clean the filters and give it a bit of a service and clean the trigger head here, which is pretty dirty as you'll see in a minute. So this is a ball cleaner, pretty typical bagless Dyson with one filter to clean. I don't think there's two on this model. There's one central filter that's in the bin. I don't think there's a cleanable exhaust filter on this one. I'll check if there is, and if there is, I'll clean it. So I think this is all the tools that come with. This is fairly clean. This is the uh, tangle-free turbine brush. I don't think that's been used very much. So maybe just a wipe down will be enough for that. You also get the combined crevice and dusting tool, and also your small nozzle for your stairs and upholstery. And this one has the articulated hard floor nozzle as well. So for carpets and hard floors, because you can use this on hard floors, we've got the trigger head, turbine, air-powered trigger head. If I remove it, I'll show you. This is the dirtiest part of the vacuum. There we go. So as you can see, a lot of hair, mostly human hair by the looks of that, has tangled around the roller. So all that needs to be cleaned up. It's not picking up very well, and I suspect when I remove the hair, it'll pick up a lot better than it is at the moment. So that will be the major thing to clean on this vacuum. And then we've got the bin, which obviously yeah, it's spitting out, so it does need emptying, as you can see. And there is a washable filter here. That's fairly dirty. This filter is washable, you're supposed to only clean it in running water or you can submerse it and give it a clean. You're not supposed to use detergent. This is quite dirty so I'm going to use a mild detergent on it and give it a thorough rinse. And also you have to make sure it's 100% dry before putting it back in your cleaner. So don't wash the filter wanting to use your vacuum cleaner a couple of hours afterwards. It's best to wash it um, once you've done your cleaning and then you can use it the next day, but 24 hours maximum and your filter should be dry. But don't dry it in a tumble dryer, don't put it over a radiator, just leave it somewhere dry and it'll just dry with the ambient room temperature. Don't force any heat, don't put a hairdryer on it, just let it dry naturally. So that's all going to be cleaned up. I'm gonna take the bin apart, you can dismantle it slightly, the bin comes away from the shroud. I'm just gonna give it all a clean. I'm not going to dismantle the cyclone, it's a bit more of an involved job for most people to do. I'm just going to clean the inner shroud, clean the bin, clean the filter, give the whole machine a wipe down, give the turbine a really good clean, and uh, that should be it. I've just emptied the contents of the bin outside so I can now show you how to give it a more thorough clean. So first of all, you press the dirt release button here at the top, the red button, until the flap opens. And that will expose a silver button here. So just press that in and you can release the container from the cyclone unit. You might have to jiggle it about a bit. So now I'm going to take this downstairs and clean this in the kitchen sink. Again, it is submersible. You could wash this in hot soapy water, which is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to clean around the seals. But of course, make sure it's 100% dry before putting it back in the machine. So this part, you're not supposed to submerge this in water. You're not really supposed to get it wet. So if you've got another vacuum cleaner to hand, you can help clean it using that, or you can use the brush attachment that comes with the Dyson. Hang on, let's just move it outwards, there we go. You can brush off some of the loose debris from around the mesh shroud here. But all I'm going to do with this, I'm going to use probably a wet wipe or just a damp cloth with some mild detergent, and I'm going to clean what I can. But as you can see, I don't know if you can quite see in there, if the camera will focus, but there is a lot of fine dust trapped inside the cyclone. They're not the easiest things for the average person to get apart. 
it is possible but I think you do need specialized screwdrivers you need like the Torx type of screwdriver to undo all these screws to separate it so you can do that if you want to do a thorough job but for most people probably a good bang and already some dirt's come out of that a good tap preferably outside against the hard object but don't tap it too hard or otherwise you might damage it that will release some of the dirt if you've got another vacuum cleaner to hand especially if you've got another cylinder vacuum you can use the hose and you can actually put it on the end here and help suck out some of the dirt that you might have loosened by tapping but to clean the rest of this I'm just going to use a damp cloth with a mild detergent and also I'm going to pay particular attention to cleaning around this seal here I want to make sure there's no grit or debris because it can stop the machine from being totally sealed if there's any debris or crud around that so I'll be cleaning all that out so that's going to be put to one side as I said I'm going to clean this I'm going to use some mild detergent because that's pretty dirty so that's all I have to do with that so just check the machine itself so just to see if there is another filter I'm not sure if there is on this model I, I said it's not mine there will be an exhaust filter but I don't think on this one it's user serviceable it doesn't look like it no I think that's a job for someone who knows what they're doing not that I don't know what I'm doing but it's more it's more of an involved job it's not a user serviceable thing all I'm showing you in this video is something that you can do yourself without having to get an engineer or a repair person to do it for you so yeah I don't think on this one there will be as I said an exhaust filter but I can't see a way of accessing it easily if you have a blockage incidentally when you remove the hose and the bin this is where it some, can sometimes block up between this part and the front where the hose goes in you can put a blunt in instrument through there something flexible to dislodge any dirt or again if you've got another vacuum cleaner to hand often just putting another vacuum cleaner hose and sucking out can dislodge anything this does come apart a little bit more as well you can take this part this flexible part will come off this tube here but again it's a bit more involved but that's somewhere that if it does become blocked that's the first place to check especially here where it's a bit narrower than the hose so all I'm going to do with the main machine itself it's just really give it a wipe down there's nothing more really I can do with that got a lot of dirt down here now but the thing I need to concentrate most on I think is cleaning this filthy turbine so here's the turbine head that obviously needs a very good clean don't submerge this in water it's got components inside that shouldn't get wet. What I'm going to show you in this video basically is stuff you can do yourself without invalidating your Dyson warranty. So it's just a basic maintenance and cleaning video. If you need any further advice, I'm sure there are other videos on YouTube for dismantling the turbine head completely. But this is just a quick video to show you the basics. So as you can see, this brush roll is yuck. <laughs> For want of a better word so to remove that for an easier more thorough clean we're going to turn this screw thread here you can use a coin just turn it to the unlocked position and then the cap comes off and then you can just pull out the brush roll from one side there's so much hair wrapped around the middle of this <laughs> there we go it's I've got it out so now, as you can see, that is pretty nasty. I'm going to take a pair of scissors and cut through all the hair, and then I'm going to give this a wash. Now looking at it, I won't get that end wet, but I'm sure I can clean this end in some hot soapy water, and then I'll pop a little bit of oil, just a dab of oil on the end there before I reassemble it, but that's gonna be thoroughly cleaned. And then of course, all this in here, best thing to use just a damp cloth with some mild detergent and then dry it with a piece of kitchen roll or an old tea towel or you can use um, a surface wipe or something like that an anti back surface wipe will be ideal you can give this a thorough clean it won't take long to dry clean the brush roll 
and then slide it back in. So that's all I'm doing. Doesn't look like there's any blockages. Just going to clean it, give it a wipe over and it should be working much better. Okay, I've cleaned all the parts. I've cleaned the vacuum itself, washed the filter and cleaned what I think was the worst part of this vacuum. I've cleaned the brush roll and I've also cleaned the turbine head. Okay, so here's the Dyson trigger head looking a lot better than it did a few moments ago. Now, there's not a lot I can do about the plastic here. It's clean, but it's gone cloudy, and that will happen after only a few uses. Any transparent parts of most vacuum cleaners, if they're in contact with dirt, and especially grit, they will soon start to look like this, and they'll go less transparent. The same applies to the bin. You can get specialised plastic polishes to improve that, but most people won't be bothered how it looks as long, it, as long as it works better, and it certainly will work better after all the things I've done to it. It didn't take me very long. So anyway, as you can see, it's much, much cleaner. So all I have to do is pop the brush roll back in, making sure it goes in the right way. You put it in this way first. So to slot it in, just turn it until it locates at this side and then you'll see you've got the little end cap that you need to pop back so just line it up get your coin and turn it to the locked position next thing to reassemble is the cyclone and bin assembly so as you can see I've given it a good clean I've managed to wipe out the middle of it and I've got as much dirt as I can from around the mesh screen. Obviously, there's not a lot more I can do without completely dismantling this, but it'll still work a lot better now. It's a lot cleaner. I've washed the filter, but the filter is still damp, but I'm just gonna show you reassembling it just for the sake of the video, but I will be taking that out and leaving it to thoroughly dry. So I've cleaned the bin. Now, one thing to remember with the bin, and it's quite important, and this happens with every Dyson that I've cleaned, is you get a lot of debris around this seal, and it's important to make sure the seal and all around it's clean. So it actually does come off, and I did this when I cleaned it. You can pull the seal off, and you'll notice when you pull yours off that there'll be a lot of crud and grit and dust in this area here. So you can remove the whole thing, but make sure you note which way it went back. What I did though for speed, I just left it like that and cleaned it. Still managed to clean most of it, but you can remove the whole thing. So when you've cleaned it, when you've dried it, when it's thoroughly dry, then you can pop the seal back round the trap door of the bin. If it's not seated properly, you'll have trouble closing it. So just take your time pushing it all round so it's evenly located. Like that. And what I suggest, you don't have to do this thorough clean every time, but what I would suggest, just make sure you keep the seals clean. Every time you empty it, just give it a wipe with a damp cloth and dry it. It doesn't take too long and you'll find you'll maintain a better seal. Okay, that's that done. So now I have to locate it back onto the cyclone unit. So remember that little silver catch? That needs to pop through that hole there. First of all, you need to locate just here at the front, there's two small holes and they need to marry up with this part here. So first you locate it, pop the cyclone unit into the bin and locate it at the front or the back, whichever way you're looking at it, until the two lugs are half sticking through the holes. And all you do, turn it around and push it until it clicks. Hang on, there we go. And just check that the seal isn't caught, that's fine. And if that's okay, just close the bin and then put it back on the cleaner. 
Before you put the bin back on the cleaner, you've got to refit the filter after ensuring it's 100% dry. Just insert it into the middle of the cyclone assembly and then pop it back on the machine. Just locate it at the bottom here first, push it forward and then just close this arm at the top. That's the end of the video. A few simple maintenance tips for the Dyson DC39. If you've got this model or a similar one, I hope you found it useful. The two most important things when you own a bagless vacuum cleaner is to empty it frequently, don't let it go over the max fill line, and of course, keep the filters clean. Wash them at least every month or according to the manufacturer's instructions. But I will say, the cheaper the bagless cleaner, normally the more maintenance you have to do on it. That's my experience. Dysons are among the best for their cyclone efficiency. You still have to wash the filters on a Dyson, providing it's a Dyson that's got a filter, but you don't have to do it quite so often and the filters stay a lot cleaner on a Dyson than on a cheaper bagless unit. Although this filter in this particular one can't have been washed very much because it did take quite a while until the water was running clear. It was black for quite a few minutes. So, whatever vacuum you've got, bagless vacuum, empty it frequently and keep the filter clean. If you've got a cheap bagless vacuum cleaner especially, especially one with a filter, a pleated filter that's located inside the bin that you can see. Those filters clog up pretty quickly and need frequent maintenance, otherwise you'll find your vacuum cleaner often cutting out. So with the Dyson you don't have to maintain the filters quite so often, but still wash them according to Dyson's instructions. But if you use the cleaner a lot, you may need to wash the filter a bit more frequently. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments section below. Hope you found the video useful and I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.